Hey, what's going on guys? Script Tactics here, and today we'll be going over the PFSense tutorial for WireGuard. So we're going to be hosting a WireGuard server on our PFSense firewall or router application uh, or box, however you want to, however yours is set up in your environment. This will be just going over the PFSense version of that. So here I am, I'm on my dashboard for PFSense. This is in a virtual box, a virtual machine, as you can see here. Um, on my LAN and my WAN interface again is going to be all private IP addresses. So you can see down here, 192.168.0.202, 192.168.1.1. So those IP addresses are again in the RFC 1918 schema. So there's only two modifications that I've done ahead of time. Uh, usually on the WAN interface, there's two rules set up: block Bogon networks and block RFC 1918 networks. I had to disable those because in order to access over the WAN interface. Um, I'm becoming from an internal IP address. So that's just one minor thing that I had to address, but everything else in this configuration, in this tutorial should be one-to-one -one match for you. And you should be able to go right ahead and just copy what I do here and apply it to your own server. So let's go ahead and get started here. So first things first, we actually need to install WireGuard. So we're gonna come over here to the system, come down to Package Manager, click Available Packages. This might just take a quick second. And we can just scroll away to the bottom or type in WireGuard here. And you can see the latest version at this time is 0.1.6 underscore 2. So we're just going to hit install and confirm. So let this run really quick. Should take like a few seconds here. And we're done. Okay. So next thing, we're going to come over to VPN. And now you should see WireGuard installed here. So we're going to click this. And you can see we have no tunnels, no peers, settings, and status. So nothing right now. Just going to go to tunnels and we're going to hit add tunnel by default make sure this is checked description i'm going to call this home vpn you can name this whatever you want does not really matter listen port i'm going to keep mine default 51820 you can change this to whatever you want as long as it's not in the reserved port status or the port range 51820 is usually the default so we'll just keep it there uh interface keys just click this generate button right here and it'll generate your private and public public keys for you and interface address. We're going to do the 10.0.0.0 subnet range, 10.0.0.1, and this will be slash 20, 24. So where is it? There it is. And this just means anything from 10.0.0.0 to 10.0.0.256. And then we'll say WireGuard subnet. And the reason why I'm doing this is just so simplicity, you could see these IP addresses when you're looking over the firewall logs. Uh, any IP address, as long as it's in the RFC 1918's uh, specification, should be fine. Uh, but once we have that, we're just going to hit Save Tunnel. And we don't need to save that there. So now we have our tunnel set up. As you can see, ton underscore WG0, descriptions home VPN, and we have our public key. So now we're going to come over to Peers. And we're going to add a peer. So first thing, we're going to assign this to the tunnel we just created. So you can see in the parentheses we have the description here. Description for this, I'm going to make this phone one. We're going to keep this dynamic. This will have to be checked unless you plan on connecting from the same IP every single time. Uh, spoiler alert, you're not. If you're using this on your phone, you're going to be connecting from uh, different cell towers, from different uh, Wi-Fi addresses, and they're all going to have different public IPs. So keep this dynamic endpoint uh, checked. Keep alive, we're going to keep that uh, default as empty as disabled. Public key, we're not going to put anything that in there right now. That when we switch over to the Android application, we'll be generating the public keys there and then they're going to be populated here. Pre shared key, we can generate this here. So click generate. And then allowed subnet or host. So for this, we're going to do 10.0.0.2 and we're going to say slash 32. So the 10.0.0.1 is reserved for the tunnel itself. And then we can use any IP inside of that range that we specified for the tunnel, which was 0 to 256. So I'm going to do 2 here. If you were to make another one, you could do 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. So for this, we'll just do 2. And I don't think it'll allow me to save because I need to create the public key. So. Let me go switch over to the Android application and then we can actually go ahead and start generating our public key and get some of our config set up. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So here we are over in Android. And so this is in a virtual machine that I have. 
And right at the bottom here, you're going to see this plus button. We're going to click this and we're going to start from scratch. So interface name, I'm just going to name this PFSense. Private key and public key. We're going to generate these by clicking this refresh icon here. And that should pre-populate our values here. Then addresses. So here, this is going to be the exact same address that we just configured in VirtualBox, or PFSense rather, right down here, allowed IPs, 10.0.0.2. That should be the exact same we set up in this address. So 10.0.0.2 slash 32. And I didn't want to do that. Nothing else. We're going to leave this all blank and we're going to hit add peer. Leave this blank and leave this blank for now. Endpoint. So this will be the public IP of your server. So I'm going to leave this blank because I'll show you where to grab that. And allowed IP. So we're going to do 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0 slash zero that means anything in the ipv4 range comma colon colon slash zero that means anything in the ipv6 range so we're making a full tunnel vpn here and this full tunnel vpn allows us to send all traffic encrypted over this tunnel you can change this to uh separate ips if you want it to be a split tunnel meaning only traffic that is destined for your home subnet you can make it those different IPs, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to make it all IPs. So now we're going to scroll down to this pre-shared key. So if we switch back over to PFSense here, this value right here is going to go into that Android thing. So I'm going to hit copy. Now I'm going to have to manually enter these the way my virtual machines are set up, but that's going to go right here in this pre-shared key. So let me go and input that and then I'll come right back. Okay. So I have my pre-shared key input here. Now I'm going to come up to the public key and I'm going to copy this value and that's going to go in PFSense right here in the public key section. So again, let me go and input these values. Okay. So now I have put in my public key from my peer. So if we switch back over, remember it's this public key value here goes down here, right here. So now we're going to hit save peer. Don't need to save that. And we're going to go back to tunnels because we got one more config to just copy over. Hit the edit button here. This public key, we're going to copy. And this goes down here in the peer section on this public key. So again, I have to manually input, input that value. So I'm going to switch back and I'm going to enter that. Okay. So now I've copied over the public key and the last part will be the endpoint. So if we switch back over to PFSense here, and I come to the dashboard, if you scroll down to the WAN section here, you should see an IP address. So this IP address is what you want to put into your Android application. So it was 192.168.0.202. And we're going to do colon for the report 51820. If you change this value, you will have to copy this change value put here but this is the default for WireGuard so that's what I'm going to put once everything's filled out we're going to hit the save button so we're done in Android for now we're going to go back over to PFSense and we're going to have to configure a couple things we're going to need firewall rules and we're going to need to do some NAT rules okay so next we got to set up a couple firewall rules so here we're going to come down to firewall and we're going to go to NAT so we're going to come over to outbound NAT and we're going to do two things. We're going to select hybrid outbound NAT rule generation. And we're going to click this add here. We're going to keep the interface as WAN. We're going to come down to IPv4. Protocol, we're going to do UDP. Actually, we're going to keep this as any. And the source network is going to be 10.0.0.0 slash 24. And so what this is doing is it's creating a rule since we're, since WireGuard comes in over WAN, we have a, a rule that we're going to be generating next of allowing traffic in over the WAN interface. But we also want to access the internet with our tunnel. So we need a way to take the addresses coming in, convert them back to the outbound address of our WAN interface, and then allow the traffic back through out the WAN. So what this is doing is it's basically doing that. Is it's saying coming in on this 10.0.0 slash 24 network, convert this to an outbound interface or IP address rather. And the hybrid outbound NAT just creates a hybrid rule. So it'll always generate whenever we have 
a network coming in or a connection coming in rather. So here we're going to hit apply and now everything has been updated and that's what we have to do for the outbound section. Next we need to go to firewall rules. So the WAN we're going to have, to, you would have two rules here. You would have block BOGON networks and block RFC 1918. I do not have those rules currently because again my PFSense box is on an internal IP address range and I'm connecting internal to internal. So RFC 1918 would actually prevent any connections coming in across the WAN. So I had to disable it for this tutorial. However, you're, by adding this next rule that we're about to generate, you do not have to worry about block, deleting those two rules you have. So keep everything default. You only have to follow the steps that I'm doing here. So you're going to hit this add button here. Action is pass. Interface is WAM. Address family is IPv4. Then you're going to switch this protocol to UDP. And we're doing that because WireGuard operates on the UDP protocol. Source. We're going to say WAN address and destination. We're going to keep this as any, and we're going to set the port to 51820 and 51820. And we're going to log these packets, and we're going to say WireGuard allow WAN to 51820, just as I had there. And I'm going to log this just to see what traffic comes in on the WireGuard address. And then we're going to hit save and apply the changes. So now this will allow WireGuard traffic in to my WAN address. So any anything that pings or tries to connect to my firewall or my public IP address that's specified to 51820, allow it in. And then WireGuard will actually handle the connections to help prevent unauthorized connections. But now we're going to come over to the WireGuard tab. And by default, there's nothing here. So no rules currently defined for the interface, all incoming connections will be blocked until a pass rule are added. So in theory, we could just turn on our, our connection and try to connect, but we're not going to be able to go anywhere. So for the sake of this tutorial, we're only going to create one rule, and this is going to allow everything. I do not recommend this for your home network or your production setup or however you set it up, but for the sake of the tutorial, just showing you how to get a connection up and running, this is going to be the quickest and fastest way to do it. I would suggest creating other firewall rules to block your LAN interface, to block any other VLANs you have, lock down what traffic can come in, what you know IPs are allowed, all that other stuff. You'd want to set those rules up here. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to have one simple rule. It's going to be a pass, interface is WireGuard, IPv4, we're going to keep that, and we're going to do any, 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 and we're just going to name this allow all. So. Any source IP is allowed, any destination IP is allowed. I block IPv6 by default, so IPv4 will be the specification we have here. Doesn't matter the protocol because we're coming in on WireGuard and then we still want to use other protocols to then connect out to different services. And we're just going to hit save here. And now you should have this one rule, just allow everything. And then we're going to hit apply changes. Once that's done reloaded, we're going to come back up to VPN and WireGuard. And we're going to go to settings and we're going to enable it. So before it was not enabled and now we're going to turn it on. So now you should see your tunnel once this refreshes. Okay. WireGuard is up and we're going to status really quick. And now you should see the green arrow pointing up. We got the description, our public key, and you see we have one peer configured. So if we hit this arrow here, you'll see we got phone one never connected. So let's go switch back over to Android. And let's see if we can get a connection. I doubt I'm going to get a clean connection on the first try because I had to manually copy over my keys and they're pretty long. So I probably made a mistake, but let's see what happens if we hit connect here and we come in. Yep. Okay. So something's wrong. I did type something else, something in wrong here. So as you can see, we have a TX that's going up, but my RX is still zero. So that means nine times out of 10, it's usually a key error typing something in wrong. So let me go back and just verify that where I made that mistake. Um, and then we'll come back in and we'll get that up and running. So I'll be right back. Okay. So we have fixed the issues and now if we switch back and we turn on our connection here, you should see we have RX and TX coming through. So I just had my keys wrong. That was one of the issues with the I had to regenerate them and retype them in, but everything else is the same. Um, but now you can see we have a latest handshake. This number will increase and the RX and TX will also increase. 
Now we switch back over to PFSense. You can see here in the tunnel, you check our peer, so I'm under status now. You can see the endpoint of when it's where it's coming from. And you can see we have a the handshake, which less than five minutes, so it's green. It'll tell us, okay, it was 26 seconds ago. If you refresh this page, this number will update and it'll give you an RX and TX per peer. Now, this value up here, the RX and TX will increment for all the peers, but at least you know you have connections specifically per peer. So it's a little bit easier to diagnose. So if I had four different peers in this list, you can check and see to make sure that, hey, they're getting connection. But hope this tutorial was useful for you. This was the PFSense WireGuard tutorial. This is also the same tutorial that I have on my website which will also be in the description of this video. So the next video we're going to be doing will be using this PFSense WireGuard server as our WireGuard server. We're going to be doing a travel router using OpenWRT and a Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi, the setup will be very similar to the OpenWRT video we did previously and the other tutorials we've done with showing off the, the phone configuration. The only difference is now the peer will be the router and it won't be a site to site VPN because that router is going to go with us everywhere. So it needs to have a dynamic endpoint, but it'll be a client and then we can connect multiple devices to that. And then we'll all tunnel back through that same uh, tunnel, that same uh, interface, that subnet there. So we'll go over that in the next video, but I hope that you look forward to that. Like subscribe, comment, and be sure to check out my links below. Thanks for watching.